Matthew chapter 11, verses 28. We read together. One, two, three, we go. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and holy in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How many of us are so heavy laden? How many of us here, you have labor? Huh? The scripture is saying, come unto me. We know the scripture. We know this so well. We've been taught about this since, since way back when we were in the Sunday school. We know it so much. Come unto me. Let's read again. Uh -huh. One, two, three, we go. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Continue. And learn of me. Listen. Take my yoke and learn of me. Uh -huh. For I am meek. Uh -huh. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Somebody say resting in God. Resting in God. What is rest? The rest the Bible talks about is not the rest of you having a lot of money, not the rest of you having too much, too much to contain. That is not what the resting of the Bible is saying about. What the scriptures are saying, what the Bible means about resting. It means, let me, let me read for you from the, from the Greek translation. Let me just translate it. I'm not going to give you the real word in Greek, but just how the way it translates. It means... Rest from our work, just like God rested from his. So rest is peace. Second one, ease, being ease, being at ease. Or oh, refreshment. <laughs> Somebody said refreshment. That is what Greek says about rest. So when we talk about rest, it is deeper, deeper than you just having work. Then you walk and come and say, let me sit down and... Mm -mm. Biblically, resting is mean something in the inside of you that gives you peace. There are people who have a lot of money but have no peace. They make money, they're doing business, there's a lot of money, whatever. They talk money, but they don't sleep. When it comes to resting in God, mm, you have the money, but you have peace. You understand what I'm saying? You have, you have whatever it needs, and you have peace. That is resting. So the moment we rest in God, that is the point where you cease to see negativity. Because you are resting. Mm. You are resting. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still, still waters. Hallelujah. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear. He anoints my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. He prepares a table before my enemies. That is what the Bible says in Psalms 23. So because the Lord is your shepherd, you are resting. David said, he makes me, he lets me, he makes me lie down in greener pastures. David is resting in greener pastures. Hallelujah. Amen. When you're resting in God, it doesn't matter where men can throw you. Wherever they throw you, you'll germinate. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Yes. Whenever man throws you, you can germinate. All you need is a seed. Uh, because if you're resting in God, even though they put you in a desert, your seed shall come out. Hallelujah. Because you are resting. Somebody say, I'm resting. Child of God. God, and God wants us to rest in his glory. Exodus 33 verses 14. And he said, my presence will go with you. This is what God is telling Moses. My presence will go with thee and I'll give thee rest. So, what we need is the presence of God 
When you have the presence of God, then God gives you the rest. Hallelujah. 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 Let me give us steps. Number one, trust God for your future. This is Psalm 16 verses 1. Resting in God, you need to trust God for your future. That means lay everything in the hand of God. Lay your future in the hands of God. You will be at rest. The reason why we think we can make it on our own. You want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. And all the end, you don't have rest. You don't have rest at all. But trust him with your future. Trust him with your business. Trust him with the academics. Trust him with everything you do at your workplace. Trust God that you'll be promoted and you'll be the head. Trust him that you'll do to your best. Trust God. Don't use your own understanding. Never use your own understanding. Neither trust in any man. The Bible says that cast is he that trusts in man. Never trust in man. Because man is soon letting you down. Hello? But the moment you trust in God and lay all your future, because you are laying on to the eternal life, God will show you give you rest. The second one is give all your worries to God. Somebody said, give your worries to God. Now, why worry? For what? And why worry? And if you worry, anyway, is it going to get out? Is the problem going to be solved if you worry? Huh? So why worry? Hello? You give your worries to God. Huh? That is you being at rest. The moment you lay your worries to God, you'll be at rest. But the moment every day you're worrying, you're worrying, you're worrying you'll be restless. Very re the opposite of rest is what? It's restless. The moment you continue to worry, oh, what will I eat tomorrow? What? The Bible says even the birds of the air can feed. Who about, what about you, the son of God? If the birds of the air can eat food, what about you? What about me? Who what about me created in the image of God? The Bible says we have been called co-creators. In other words, there's a scripture that says, don't you know that you are gods? That means wherever God is not there, I represent him. So why worry? 